Hi, I'm Alex Sherman. Hi, I'm Zachary Hall. Everybody knows about the improvements the cars have gone through over the years. But not many people are aware of how this technology has affected the way our cars drive. In this video, I will be going over driver interface and HUD. I'll be talking about all-wheel drive systems. I will be going over anti-lock braking systems. And I will be going over drive-by-wire systems. Touchscreens have become widespread standard features in many cars over the last few years, putting all of the car's many functions into one compact interface. This may seem like it would be very convenient. However, this nice little touchscreen is just that, a little touchscreen with little buttons. This increases driver's distractions and makes interacting with your nice new modern car difficult. A designer named Matthias Kren came up with a new UI to make these interactions easy. Here's a video that will show you how the multi-touch UI works. How do you control different things if you don't have multiple buttons or sliders on the screen? Well, because this is a multi-touch display, you can invoke different controls by using different numbers of fingers. So with two fingers, you can control the volume. With three fingers, you control the music source. Four fingers control temperature. and five fingers control airflow. And they all follow the same principle. You place your fingers anywhere on the screen and drag up or down to make the adjustment. And if you look closely, you'll see that each control has a different sensitivity. The volume, for example, changes in very small steps because it's less important that you hit one specific number. When changing the music source, however, the interface helps you to select the right one by requiring more movement to make a change. That way you're less likely to miss. So far this makes four things you can control. But that's not enough yet. That's why this interface doesn't only react to how many fingers you use, but also to whether they're close together or far apart. Look at what happens when you spread your fingers and touch the screen. The interface goes into a different mode again and selects a different control. Instead of changing the volume like before, two fingers now let you scrub through your playlist. And of course, this works for two, three, four, or five fingers. All in all, this interface gives you easy control over eight different settings. And it does that without you having to take your eyes off the road because you're being distracted trying to hit that one small button on the screen. Jet fighters have used heads-up displays for years and holographic technology, so why not implement them into cars? Well, the 2013 Cadillac ATS has done just that. The heads-up display works just like you would expect it to by projecting information onto your windshield. The Cadillac's heads-up display shows you your speed, and it also works with your GPS system showing you directions. This cuts down on distractions by placing important information not in the way, but in a more easily accessible location. All-wheel drive systems are actually not a new feature for cars. In fact, Subaru started implementing all-wheel drive into their cars in 1972 with the Leone. In 1980, Audi made four-wheel drive vehicles synonymous with rallying when they launched the iconic Quattro. <laughs> Computers have made this technology more refined and affordable. And today, it's hard to find a manufacturer that doesn't offer all-wheel drive in at least some of their cars. As you might expect, many of these manufacturers have different all-wheel drive systems. To keep things simple, we are going to be discussing the Haldex layout, which is a Swedish design that was developed in the late 90s. The Haldex all-wheel drive layout is unique in that most of the time it is feeding power to the front wheels only 
just like a front-wheel drive car. As you drive, it is constantly receiving information from the car's computer about the surface of the road and the grip that each of the tires has. Upon sensing that the front wheels have lost traction with the road, the car then sends power through the transfer case to the rear wheels. As you drive, the car's transfer case is continuously splitting the power between the front and rear wheels and is able to send as much power as it needs to to each of the four wheels. This allows for superior performance in slippery conditions or constantly changing traction. Anti-lock braking is an integral part in cars today. This automated system uses the principles of threshold braking and cadence braking to allow the wheels of a vehicle to maintain traction, allowing the vehicle to effectively stop in a shorter distance. In a car without ABS, slamming on the brakes would result in the wheels locking up and halting rotation, which would cause the wheels to just skid. This skidding would then cause the vehicle to lose traction with the road surface, which in turn would make steering difficult along with increasing effective stopping distance. With ABS, when the brakes are applied, the controller recognizes the change in rotational speed and it will automatically increase and decrease pressure to the brakes accordingly. This increasing and decreasing will give off a pulsing feeling in the brake pedal. This pulsing occurs many times in a single second, which is much faster than what even a professional driver can accomplish. This allows the tires to quickly decelerate without losing traction. Using ABS correctly decreases effective stopping distance and even allows the driver to continue steering while stopping. I will be showing you how a fly-by-wire system functions on newer vehicles. A fly-by-wire system consists of an accelerator pedal with two or more sensors, a throttle valve with two or more sensors, engine speed sensors, vehicle speed sensors, and cruise control sensors. It also consists of an ECM or PCM that makes decisions or calculations based off of sensor input. These are called closed circuit algorithms. Here is an example of how these work. This is a 2008 Trailblazer Supersport. This is the throttle body that controls the air going into the motor which controls your acceleration. As you can see there's no cable controlling it, there's only an electric motor. When you hit the gas, it opens the throttle body and allows more air into the engine. As you can see, the ECU makes everything seem seamless. It even facilitates in traction control and pre-crash systems. However, in September of 2007, a lawsuit was brought against Toyota when a woman's vehicle sped out of control and resulted in a traffic fatality. A $3 million lawsuit then ensued. Due to the lawsuit, there is now controller redundancy and redundant pedal and throttle position sensors. It is clearly evident that without these very common computer-controlled aspects of our cars, our driving experience would be very different. Hopefully, you are all better aware of these features and how they function in your own vehicles. We hope that you can all have a better appreciation for these functions. After all, you are all a lot safer because of them. We can tell you that, without a doubt, 30 years ago, your daily commutes would have been just a bit more treacherous without the technology that we have in 2014.